This episode is sponsored by the Entourage's Entrepreneurs Marketing and Sales Summit, our free digital event that has gathered the biggest names in business to teach you how to build a marketing and sales engine that works without you. Secure your free seat today at www.the-entourage.com forward slash event. Real influencers today and the people that we work with are those who actually can project something that people can connect with. You know, and every single business owner needs to think of themselves as an influencer. Make them feel important, but don't just blow smoke up there. You know what? Actually speak to their individual passions or skill sets. I ended up becoming a bit of a sleuth detective. I know these people are out there. I've just got to work out a way that I can get in the room with them. So I think there is something of value and really genuinely, um, you know, when you follow someone on Facebook as well, taking the time of 5, 10, 15 minutes, genuinely comment on them about what they're doing and uh, what the great things they're doing in the business. And, and also, you know, keeping that relationship going as well. Hi everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Make It Happen show, where it's time for you to make it happen. This episode comes from our Entrepreneurs Assembly, which is where we bring all of our entourage members together into the one place and go through lots of professional and personal development. And we also hear from some amazing entrepreneurs from our community. So in this episode, we have four of our entrepreneurs sharing their fantastic tips and strategies for building relationships in business. So as always with these implementation sessions, there's so much for you to take and apply to your business. So I want you to sit down, have your pens ready, take lots of notes and be ready to make it happen. Let's get into it. So we've invited these wonderful people up here because we want to talk about the power of relationships and learning how to network, how to go out there and build those relationships for better strategic placement and to grow our businesses. I'm going to introduce you to each of our panelists. We're going to, I'm going to go through a couple of questions with them. Um, but the first gentleman that we have here is the good man Dylan Mullen, uh, founder and director of Happy Skin Co., experts in all things beauty, tech and home of the world's number one home IPL hair removal handset, which we'll hear about in a minute. Generated $25 million in revenue in the first two years from an initial startup of $20,000. Next, we have the gorgeous Wendy. Wendy is the founder of Wedded Wonderland and one of the world's um, leading directories and media companies specializing in wedding events and lifestyle industries. Um, credited for growing over 20 million followers on her channels. Um, at marketing events, content expert, she's been featured on News.com, Daily Mail, Cosmo Bride, and many, many more. She is often credited with the um, elevation and reinvigoration of the wedding and special events industry in Australia. And she's earned herself the title of the fairy godmother for small business. And this year, she stepped up to lead her industry through crisis. All right. And next we have wonderful Sunil Kumar. And Sunil is the CEO and founder of Reliance Real Estate. From 1 million annual revenue to over 16 million in three years. Um, he has a new book coming up in September, From the Ground Up, being released in September. Named Australian Financial Review's number one fastest growing real estate company and the AFR's number eight fastest growing company in Australia. And then, of course, we have the absolutely wonderful and amazing Sammy Cook. She is the former CEO of One Disease, growing the organization more than fourfold under her leadership. She's also a partner at Twio Capital Investment and Advisory Group co-founder of Flav, named 100 Women of Influence by the Australian Financial Review. Let's please give Sam and these wonderful people a round of applause. All right, thank you team. So we're gonna be really talking about everything to do with relationships. How many of us recognize that relationships can be powerful, can open doors for us, yes? Very good. So I'm gonna throw some questions out to the whole panel. So Sam and the rest of the panel, uh, what have been the essential relationships in your journey uh, do you think the key players you've needed in your network have differed depending on the stage of your journey um, of where you were at? So who were the key people that you met and how those relationships changed? Yeah, I think the, the one that I'll address probably first is whether it differs yep. in, in any way. And I think I'm, I'm a, a person who likes to rely on the people around me. Um, and you do that in a, a number of ways. You'll have your, your team, 
Um, you'll have a board of advisors. Um, you'll have your friends and your family and you find comfort in those people because you've brought them around the table for particular reasons. So uh, what I would focus on for this question in particular is the notion of a board and having a board of advisors. But the thing that I want to talk about with the board and why it's so relevant in the early stage or really no matter what stage you're at is the, the wisdom that they bring. So I'll probably get you to write this down. I refer um, when you're building a board to the, to the four W's. So essentially, when you're building a board, it's so important to be deliberate and very, very strategic with who you bring around the table. So for wisdom, what insight and experience do they bring to the table? With wealth, can they personally invest or do they know other people who can invest for you? With work, are they active board members? Are they willing to get their hands dirty and actively problem solve with you and your team? Then the next one is web. And this is essentially about networking. So who on your board can open doors for you? And in a lot of ways, we don't have to have a board. Um, when you own a percentage of, of your business, it's, it's not legal but we really, really value it because we're leaning on them. As I said really early in the piece, I lean on people around me. They cover my weaknesses. Um, they give me such amazing advice and it's, it's okay to lean into your vulnerabilities and have someone almost help hold your hand through this because running businesses is bloody stressful. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Sunil, over to you. Yeah, I think uh, for me it's um uh, a lot more simpler than that. Um, it's about building those key relationships with my team and, um, you know, uh, almost from the start. Uh, so, and having a really good relationship in terms of they understand where we're heading and really align with the business. Um, so, and outside from that, then we're talking about the client. There's a client in my list, which if I call them, they'll answer. If they call, I answer. And I think as me, Personally, they have helped me a lot more in the business uh, in, in, in that regard. And also, the third one is for me as, again, um, the community of the entrepreneurs or, uh, or the group like this, because I was part of Entourage, I think, uh, four, four, four years ago and have learned a lot. So there's always maintaining that kind of a relationship and coming back and rubbing shoulder and really listening to some good ideas, um, you know, from the like-minded people like this. My network started with a lot of Instagram stalking and um, DMing and uh, trying to figure out who followed us. We grew very quickly back in the glory days of Facebook and Instagram, we started in 2012. And so we had 100,000 followers in six months and I was trying to work out what was going on. And uh, I realized that the only way that you can actually work out who you're connected with is by asking those questions is by reaching out, is by doing a lot of DMing, trying to work out specifically what you can offer someone as opposed to what you want from them, um, determining what the connection can be moving forward and what the strategic goal of talking to that person will be. So I believe in online networking and really taking that at uh, to another level in terms of saying to yourself, I'm going to reach out to three people a week on my Instagram, on my LinkedIn, on my Facebook, whatever the case may be, and I'm going to have something specific to go to this person with that I can offer them. I'm going to take it offline and try to connect with them and work out what this relationship may look like moving forward, what is the end goal. Um, and I really feel like that made a massive difference. A lot of people didn't respond, and that's fine because that is what builds resilience and that's what makes us consider, well, did I send them the right message? Was I powerful enough? Is this something that they actually wanted to engage with? But going in with a purpose is really important. And there are a lot of people out there who in the entrepreneurial space are looking for new opportunities and new conversations. Thank you. Let's give Wendy a hand. Thank you. Awesome. Dylan. Yeah, for me, I'll, I'll share relationships that were really crucial along the way. When I started the business, I was 24. Uh, my business partner at the time wasn't much, wasn't much older. We saved 10 grand each and that was all our savings. So we had no business experience, not a whole lot of money. We were just very lucky in the fact that we had a really cool product. It was great timing. We did, we did some good branding at the start and it exploded. Like the first year, we probably did in our first 12 months close to $10 million. So going through that journey, it, there's a lot of wins and a lot of things like we were just pushed for growth, growth, growth. And that's great at the time. But once, once you get through the first year of business and then you get into the second year when, when all the challenges start to come up and you start finding out all those holes and all those things you weren't doing, 
we actually, I brought on uh, our, our finance manager, our head of finance for our business, which was actually my older cousin. Um, and he, he, was, he was high up finance manager for Downer, one of the largest employees in Australia, working on things like the NBN project, like $100, $100 million projects and bigger. And we brought him in. And the amount of things he found that we were doing wrong, we were just like, yep, let's push top line revenue. That's all that matters. If we had him in the first year, honestly, we probably would have been an extra 25% more profitable. I was very young. And whether you're young, whether you're old, there's going to be certain things you've had experience in with and things you haven't. And really building that team and someone that you can go to and you know they, they round out your strengths. Something you might not be good at numbers, they may be that person or vice versa. And having someone that you can go to that is going to tell you, hey, you're being an idiot or you're being immature, you're thinking short term. You need someone that can keep you accountable and have that different perspective. So that's one thing for me. Hi, everyone. Andrew Barella here, Head of Business Development at The Entourage. Just wanted to jump in and say, if you're really enjoying this episode of the Make It Happen Show, we think you'll love learning more top marketing and sales strategies from Australia's leading entrepreneurs and industry experts at our upcoming free digital events, the Entrepreneurs Marketing and Sales Summit, featuring the likes of Gabby Leibovich from Catch of the Day, Jess Hatsis from Frank Body, Tony Nash from Booktopia, Justine Flynn from Thank You, and our very own founder, Jack Delosa too. This free event is one not to be missed if you're looking for business growth to take you and your business to the next level and ensure that you end the year strong. As it's a free event, seats are limited. So secure your free seat today now at www.the-entourage.com forward slash event. Now let's get back into the show. Great, thank you. Please give Dylan a hand. Um, you know, when I, when I coach a lot of the, the members at The Entourage, one of the challenges that I hear a lot of people talk about is that they don't feel that they have the influence to meet the right people who are going to open doors for them. So I'm just curious, how have you been able to connect with people of influence who've either been able to unlock doors for you, um, help you make a bigger impact and get in front of the right people? Go for it. Cool. I, uh, I might go the other way here because I'm sure everyone's going to talk about how they networked and, and everything. For me, what, what, what I did and worked really well for me is, and I'm not to saying that if I was really worked hard on networking and trying to get myself out, that wouldn't happen faster. But what I did, I got runs on the board. I focused on owning my craft, being good at what I am, putting runs on the board, and then the opportunity starting to come to me. Once I realized that, the first time I'd say, hey, someone would reach out. Do you want to be on this podcast? Do you want to come speak here? I realized, oh, there is a demand for this. Once I just spent that little bit of time and I've only just hit the surface of putting out the content around what I know and what my message is and they just keep coming in. Come on this podcast. I got to work with Gary Vee for many, many months. I work with Gary Vee in London, in New York, in Sydney, all because of what I've done and just getting that, that message out. And another thing before I pass on, which is really important in terms of personal brand, if you're in this space, the biggest mistake I see so many people meeting, they'll be like, okay, I'm Dylan, I'm the entrepreneur. This is what I did my first couple of things. I'm sitting there, I have a suit on, sitting up straight, and then I'm like this robot of like, this is how entrepreneurs should speak. And then when I realized, what am I doing? And it was in front of a big group of business owners, and they were talking about the early days in the business, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's hectic. And then I realized, I just said hectic in front of a bunch of business people. <laughs> And then everyone, like, there was a split second in my mind. I'm like, what did I just do? And then everyone laughed. Everyone, like, they appreciate realness. So just stay true to who you are. Stick, stick to your message and, like, follow your passions. Don't try and be what you think other people want you to be. Be, be who you are. Nice one. Excellent. Thank you. Wendy? I'm going to go into a little bit of community management and uh, talk about the inbound and outbound approach of social media when you're online when you're engaging it is about being present in the moment and understanding the value of someone's time in having a conversation with you whether it's two minutes or whether it's two hours so if you're in a room and you're thinking i really didn't make the most of that and i didn't you know connect with a few key people jump on socials find out who they are connect with them online try and continue the conversation and have something meaningful to go with and work out what your business and their business can do moving forward, which is actually strategic. That's what people want to hear and want to see. And we speak about influence, but we speak about influences as well. And we hear the term influences. Real influences today and the people that we work with are those who actually can project something that people can connect with. 
you know, and every single business owner needs to think of themselves as an influencer. If you were to hire an influencer to talk about your brand and your business, what would you want them to say? What would you want them to do? And how would you want them to dress? You need to be your own influencer. Uh, one of the main what works for me is I obviously make a list of this year if I want to connect with some of the people um, and really finding out like from the social you can really find out what they are into. So I think there is something of value and really genuinely um, you know when you follow someone on Facebook as well taking a time of 5, 10, 15 minutes genuinely comment on them about what they're doing and uh, what the great things they're doing in the business and, and also you know keeping that relationship going as well. Um, and really find out who your VIPs are. I mean, you can't connect with the 3,000 people, but most importantly, the people who can really can um, do business with you and, you know, vice versa, and they can take uh, some of the advantage or some of the help from you as well. So really keeping it tight. Sammy? Yeah. Um, I think when it, I was very similar actually um, to <coughs> Dylan with my, when I started at One Disease. So I wasn't the founder, but I was the founding CEO. I, I think I was the second employee, really. Um, and I think at the time, very similar in the fact that I was 23. So it's quite interesting for this, this question, I would probably say one of the most important skills that I learned in my time at One Disease was researching and just creating my own opportunities. When I had to find high net worth individuals, but then, you know, I'm a 24 year old, I have no connection to these business owners and these people are so successful at what they do and have made enough money to then go and support the charities and the causes that they love so much. So I ended up becoming a bit of a sleuth detective. I know these people are out there. I've just got to work out a way that I can get in the room with them. So I did some pretty interesting things and these are techniques that you can all adopt. So I became very good at working out, all right, they sit on a board. What other boards do they sit on? Who are those people on those boards? So who are those people around them? You just start to develop this whole web and you start to see that a lot of people in positions of power tend to share multiple board positions. Um, I also did things like what associations or membership groups are they a part of? Um, are they going to be at those events? Because I sure as hell was. Um, I had to almost create my own luck. I had to almost manifest these coincidental meets. They're not really coincidental. I really researched hard and I planned and I made sure I practiced my pitch, you know, that elevator pitch. I just would really nail it. I also did probably next level crazy. I had Google alerts on particular people's names. So anytime an article was published about them or they're going to speak at a networking event, again, I was at that event. Why? Because I knew. Why? Because I took up the time to set up those Google alerts. So you can kind of, you can make and create your connections because as a 24 year old, like, what the hell did I know? Um, I'm curious, what, um, can we do to create a wow elevator pitch that stands out from everybody else? I've always um, really liked Simon Sinek. I'm sure a lot of you know um, he's published a book, Start With Why. And for him, I think what he really highlights is, you know, start with your why when it comes to an elevator pitch. You know, people aren't necessarily concerned about the how or the what and all the bells and the whistles and all your credentials. Um, you can have such a, a, a long laundry list of these amazing things, but at the, end of the, at the end of the day, why do you do what you do? And it's that shared social belief that acts as the connector often between key stakeholders, between investors, between you know, people, between, I don't know if you're trying to sell a product and a service to your customer. People engage because you have a shared value set, and as long as you can lead with your why, people will engage and get behind it. Uh, I believe an elevator pitch should include what problem your business is solving, because that's really how you can connect with whoever it is that you're speaking to. Without a problem to solve, you don't have a business to have. So um, I really believe that uh, the essence of, of trying to connect with someone and ensure that there is some sort of competitive advantage, some sort of difference, some sort of unique element, which is you and the purpose of why you do what you do, but in conjunction with that, the why factor, and also what does that actually mean to the market, whether it's B2B, whether it's B2C, C2C, whatever it is, 
what problem are you actually solving? I've spoken at a number of conferences in the States and if you want to learn how to network, just get in a, f a room with Americans. Like I was honestly, I was at the pool once and uh, this was in Mexico at a conference I spoke at. I was speaking to a few people, very, you know, Australian, how you going, what, how's your day, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, the next day, I'm on stage speaking and afterwards, I had a whole bunch of people come up here and go, I didn't realise that was you and you should have told us and why this and why that. And I thought, we just don't lead with what we do as business. We just lead with who we are as people. And, um, and the first thing that the Americans do is, hi, I'm this person. This is what I own. This is what I do. Tell me about you. And they are very, very direct. And it's something that uh, we aren't used to, but it is, there is a lesson to be learned there in not apologising for who we are, apologising for our efforts and our wins, and also knowing how to speak about our business and our achievements without feeling pompous, I guess. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Great. So how would you approach somebody who you feel is beyond where you're at this point in time? One thing I just want to frame, I'm 27, I have no experience in the industry. A lot of times people will get on stage or they'll be a coach and they will act like they know everything and they'll try and give advice and everything. I think that's when you get caught out. Um, but to your point, what I would do, I would, I would just try and position myself in the best light. And for me, kind of going back to my last point, being able to share confidently um, what your message is, who you are, the success that your business have had, the journey it's on, and tailor it to why you want them, right? Not just, oh yeah, you've been successful. Make them feel important, but don't just blow smoke up there. You know what? Actually speak to their individual passions or skill sets that isn't just necessarily general knowledge. Appeal to them as a person, um, why you want them specifically. Do I really want to give up a lot of my time to that? So that's a couple of my thoughts. I hope it helps. For me, I think, um, um, uh, like for externally for my client, um, I think as, as Dylan said as well, you don't want to be hurrying up as well. Like somebody, somebody, some people wants to start the talk today and they wants to hire them or wants to do the business next week. It doesn't happen uh, that quick. Um, that's for the external client. I, uh, this particular CEO I was following, he have a major uh, portfolio on the on the business, I think. And I've been sort of staying in touch with him on and off for for almost a year and two months now. And as I said, uh, just last week, I was in a boardroom with him as a first time. So business relationship take time. So that's that's really, and he was someone who was out of my reach. And the second example I wanna give is is more personal to me. Uh, when like in a COVID time, we, we obviously everything was upside down. So was this particular um, girl I wanted to hire as my EA, and she was kind of out of reach, she was almost happy where she was as well. But we've been pursuing her for some time and actually just being genuine and really, really passionate about what we do. And you know, just in the last six months, I think slowly in staying in touch and really providing what her passion is. So you know, we end up hiring her, so she's working uh, very next to me now. So just to like give it a time and stay consistent and obviously you know, uh, follow through. Um, all right, thank you. We've run out of time. So um, I know that you guys are really busy in your businesses as well. So thank you very much for making the time out of your hectic schedules um, on behalf of myself, Jack, and the entourage, and of course our members for coming out here, sharing your wisdom, sharing your knowledge. Uh, we can get you in touch with your socials. You might be hanging around for a few minutes. Um, but let's please give these wonderful panelists a thunderous round of applause if we could, please. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Make It Happen Show. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. And it doesn't need to end there. We've actually gone and grabbed a whole bunch of extra resources for you. Behind the scenes footage, videos from this and all the other episodes, as well as show notes that you can grab for free. Just head along to www.the-entourage.com slash podcast and you can grab all those extra resources. Thanks for tuning in and I cannot wait to introduce you to our next guest on the next episode.